This video is covering plant responses and it's the first of two videos on this topic. Plant growth is influenced by both internal and external factors. The internal factors are growth regulators. These are chemicals produced mostly at the shoot tips and also the root tips, so the apical meristems. And remember, a meristem is a region of the plant where the cells are dividing continuously by mitosis. Growth regulators can promote growth, so they can stimulate growth to happen, or they can inhibit it. Then the external factors are light, temperature, day length and gravity, and it's important that you can list those four. So let's look at the external factors. Well, light is needed for photosynthesis. It's essential. Day length is also really important because it ensures that the plants flower at the right time of the year. This is very important for their survival. Gravity is also important because it ensures that the roots will grow down. That's important for absorption of water and minerals and anchorage. And the shoots will grow up, which is important for absorbing all of that sunlight. And temperature is important because of those enzyme controlled reactions. They like to take place in a temperature range of between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. Plants are living things and like all living things they respond. It's one of the characteristics of life. So the way in which plants usually respond is by changing how they grow usually. This is known as a tropism. It's defined as a growth response of a plant to a stimulus. Really important. So the main tropisms are how a plant grows in response to light, water, chemicals, gravity and touch. Phototropism is defined as the growth response of a plant to light. So the stems are going to grow towards the light, towards the stimulus, so they're positively phototropic, but the roots will grow away, so they're negatively phototropic. Geotropism is defined as the growth response of a plant to gravity, so the roots will grow towards gravity, they're positively geotropic, but the shoots will grow away from gravity, so they're negatively geotropic. Chemotropism is the growth response of a plant to chemicals. An example of this is the pollen tube in sexual reproduction of flowering plant. Remember, the pollen tube grows down into the style towards the ovule, and it's doing so in response to chemicals produced by the ovary. If you spray fertilizer on your grass and water it, the roots will always grow down towards those minerals, the nitrogen and the phosphorus. Hydrotropism is the growth response of a plant to water. The roots will always grow towards the water and the shoots away. So the roots would be classed as positively hydrotropic and the shoots negatively hydrotropic. Thigmotropism is the growth response of a plant to touch. So think of ivy climbing up a wall or a house or those climbing roses. They have little parts in their stems called tendrils and they wrap around whatever they touch. So now it's important to discuss growth regulators, those chemicals that control the growth of plants. So the first thing we need to do is define growth regulator. It's a chemical that controls the growth of plants and it's important to learn that definition. Growth regulators can be split into two groups. They're either classed as growth promoters, so they cause growth. For example, the auxins are a family or a group of growth promoters. The most common auxin is IAA, indoleacetic acid, and we'll cover a lot about that later on. But then there's the growth inhibitors, which slow or inhibit growth. And there are two on our course that we have to learn about. Ethylene, otherwise referred to as ethene, and then abscisic acid. So I think the best way to deal with these growth regulators is to draw a table and to write the key features in. So you can pause the video and take this table down or you can do it later. But a table, I think, is easiest for learning this material or gathering it all together. So if we look at the growth promoters here on the left, you can see that the auxins are the group that we study. So the most important auxin is indoleacetic acid. It's the most common and it's referred to as IAA and you're going to meet it a lot throughout the rest of this chapter. So it's produced in the apical meristems, so the root tips and shoot tips, but mostly the shoot tips and it's transported downwards. It's also found in developing seeds and in young leaves. Auxins or IAA cause stem elongation, so they cause the stem to get longer and they do this by causing cell elongation. They also cause root growth, but the concentration has to be very low to stimulate root growth. At high concentrations, it's going to inhibit root growth. It also causes fruit formation. It's responsible for phototropism, geotropism and high concentrations of IAA will prevent leaves falling from the trees. Also, IAA is important for apical dominance, so it maintains apical dominance. It prevents side branching. So now let's do the growth inhibitors. Well, ethene or ethylene is a gas, so it's very unusual because it's the only one that's a gas. Then we have abscisic acid. So ethene and abscisic acid can be produced in most parts of the plant. 
Ethene is responsible for ripening fruit, so it's used commercially for ripening fruit. Ethene also causes the leaves to fall from the trees, and ethene is produced when plants are stressed or wounded. Abscisic acid is known as the plant stress hormone because it causes the stomata to close in times of drought. It maintains dormancy in seeds as well, so it inhibits germination. So that's really important for your course. So we study auxins in great detail in this chapter, particularly IAA. So this is just some other information on auxins. So just to recap, we know that they're produced in the apical meristem, so the shoot tips in particular, and they're produced in very tiny amounts and they're transported downwards through the plant. And it's thought that they're transported in the phloem. Concentration and location is really important because you can have a high concentration of an auxin in the shoot. So high concentrations of that auxin IAA will cause the shoot to elongate so it'll cause the stem to grow but the same concentration in the roots will inhibit growth so you have to have very low concentrations of IAA in the roots to stimulate root growth and growth regulators it's important to know they can interact with each other so they can work together some of them can work together to boost an effect or they can have an antagonistic effect where one stops the other from working. Auxins are responsible for phototropism, the growth response of a plant to light, where the stems or the shoots are positively phototropic, they'll grow towards light. In particular, it's IAA, that auxin indole acetic acid. When the plant, or in particular the plant shoots, are exposed to equal amounts of light, the IAA made in the apical meri stem at the tip of the shoot, it will diffuse down equally through the stem and it will cause all of the cells to elongate and this causes the plant to grow upwards so the stem or the shoot grows upright. So when there is unilateral light, so when the light is coming in from one direction only, all of the plant shoot will not get equal amounts of light, so there'll be a shaded part. So the IAA is still produced in that apical meri stem at the shoot tip, but it will diffuse down more down the shaded side. This will cause those cells to elongate more, and so there'll be a bending effect. Because of those cells elongating more on the shaded side, the shoot tip will bend over towards the light. So auxins, in particular IAA, are responsible for apical dominance. So when the apical bud is present, that apical meri stem, IAA, is produced here and the IAA will inhibit the lateral buds or the auxiliary buds from growing. So you will get a tall plant with not much side branching. However, if you cut off the apical bud, that apical meri stem, lateral or auxiliary buds are no longer inhibited and they grow so you get a shorter plant with much more side branching. So we've learned previously that the effect a growth regulator will have depends on its concentration and where it's acting, so the location. So we're discussing IAA here and this is a really important graph. It's connected with a practical that hasn't appeared for a very long time, so it's worth getting to, to know this practical and this graph. But this graph is showing you that at high concentrations, Indole acetic acid or IAA is acting as a growth inhibitor. It's preventing root growth and shoot growth. When you examine the graph, you can see other things as well. You can see that at very low concentrations of IAA, the roots are stimulated to grow and at slightly higher concentrations, the shoots are stimulated to grow, but the roots are inhibited at that concentration. So we also learned about ethene or ethylene, our growth inhibitor, and it's very unusual because it's a gas. It's produced in most parts of the plant and it's responsible for ripening fruit. And once some ethene is produced, it will stimulate the production of more ethene. Abscisic acid was the other growth inhibitor made in most parts of the plant. It inhibits growth. It's known as the stress hormone because it causes the stomata to close in times of drought. It causes leaf fall and it's associated with seed dormancy. So you have to give examples of commercially prepared growth regulators and one year they asked you for two particular auxin examples. So rooting powders is the first auxin example. Naphtalacetic acid or NAA is a rooting powder. So if you take a cutting from a plant and dip it into rooting powder, it will stimulate the roots to grow. So you get a new plant that way you can plant it in a pot. So then ethene is the gas that's used to commercially ripen fruit. Another example for auxins is that they're used in tissue culturing for plants. So at different concentrations, they'll stimulate shoots to grow and at other concentrations, they'll stimulate roots to grow. And auxins are also used in the production of seedless fruit. So what should I know at the end of this video? We'll be able to list the internal and external factors that influence plant growth. That's easy. So state what a growth regulator is, really define it. Define tropism, give examples of tropisms and define each one. 
differentiate between growth promoters and growth inhibitors. So tell the difference. So really, this is all now that table. So if you can draw that table and write out the notes in that, you will learn loads of this. So most of this chapter, in fact, you're going to outline how IA causes phototropism and know that concentration is key to the effect. And that's all key to that practical. So after this, I would watch the video on the practical and get to know that graph in detail. So give some details on ethene and abscisic acid. Again, that's the table and give two uses of commercially prepared growth regulators. I would know a lot of them so you have choice and know two uses for auxins specifically.